So hi there. I tell stories. I've been telling stories for a long time.、Um, I drew all my slides today. It was a labor of love. I hope you enjoy them. Got some other really wonderful illustrations in Beth's talk. I enjoyed those. So I've been telling stories through comics professionally. That is to say, getting paid to tell stories with comics since I was about 17. I even won an award and had hordes of fan girls, and I was doing really well for a cartoonist. Cartoonists don't really make as much as you guys do, unless you're in open source specifically. Once again, labor of love, right? So it took me many years to master、uh, master this two-dimensional art. Seven years exactly, and it was totally worth it. I was at the top of my game. Everything was going really great. And I loved, specifically loved, the idea of mixing music in with my comics, and I, I wanted to take it to that next level. But you can only do so much with pixels on on the、uh, screen. There's only so far you can go. Back in those days, all we really had was Flash, and for one reason or another, I didn't really feel like learning Flash. I liked I liked doing comics, but I kept sneaking in music and wishing I could add like animations and game components to my comics. Just never had that option. It was web comics, so I had access to all of my audience. It was possible, just no means. So, I had a forced career change. I mentioned that cartoonists don't make much, and they also don't have health care. So, when you need surgery, you have to go get a job that pays enough or gives you health care. And I specifically looked at my skill set and said, "I'll do this web stuff for a living. I seem to be good at that." Yeah. And I got into web design and then front-end development. I continued to tell stories and presentations and illustrations for articles and things, and doing much like you're seeing today. But I never thought I would be going back to telling stories the way I used to. I never thought I would lay out a path for people to follow and illustrate it ever again. So this is Scott McCloud, and raise your hand if you've read Scott McCloud's work. So those of you with your hands down, there's a really cool book called Reinventing Comics that you should read, and it's by Scott McCloud. And this guy right here, if you know who he is, you're going to get so much street cred, not only with UXers, but with designers and illustrators and artists and every cool person on the street. They're going to be like, this person speaks my language. So homework tonight: go home and get Reinventing Comics from your library. So in this book, he mentioned this. Infinite canvas. He proposed that the future of comics was on digital tablet devices. By the way, this was before the iPad ever came out. It was like five, maybe ten years beforehand. That the comics would be in this infinite, expanding canvas on tablets, and people would draw them everywhere. He has a, a micro payments. He had a lot of really forward-thinking thoughts. Some didn't come to fruition. Some are coming to fruition right now. But it took like five years and a few specs before I realized that the infinite canvas was right there in front of me all this time. It was my browser. The browser just started exploding with HTML5 APIs for like web audio, speech recognition, CSS animation specifically. I'm a CSS nerd, so as soon as I figured out how to rock those puppies, I started putting in animations everywhere I could, and I started illustrating again, and I started telling stories the way I like to tell stories again. I had found my infinite canvas, and I had spent at least five years mastering the foundations to wield all these tools properly. So what did I do? I immediately quit my job and went on the road to conferences to spread the good news of the infinite canvas. <laughs> and once again, I'm back to、uh, <clears throat> back to labor of love, but much healthier now. So, spreading the gospel, demoing little things,、uh, showing people the amazing stuff you can do with all this crap that's in your browser for free. And what do you think the most common comment I get is when I'm speaking at a developer conference? What do you think I hear the most? That's a rhetorical question. So, well, it's easy. It's easy. Everyone can draw. I do not believe in artistic talent. I do not believe that artists are different from everyone else. I think we treat them differently. I think artists have more time to doodle, or they don't care if they get caught doodling. I think there are a lot of things that make artists who they are, but I don't think they're born that way. I think we make artists, and artists make themselves. So, 
You want to draw like me? That's easy. Just quit your job, spend seven years drawing, uh, <laughs> make 75% less than you do now. It'll come together. But I, I want you guys to know that the images really are just the surface of what I do. You look at this and you see all the art. This is, by the way, this is Alice in Videoland. And soon after I started my own company last year, I got approached by Adobe to do an article for their magazine for designers called Inspire. And this was the introduction. It, it, an introduction, I thought, for designers to learn about SVG and jQuery and CSS animations. And I did this uh, with jQuery specifically for a reason, because I get asked a lot at conferences, especially by JavaScript developers, well, this is fairly easy to kick off these events using JavaScript. Why did you use jQuery and all those plugins? And the simple reason is because I didn't want to write an article vomiting seven years' worth of JavaScript theory on these uh, designers. I wanted to get them interested in using the browser as an infinite canvas. And that meant giving them easy-to-reach tools to tell the story in the quickest possible way, tools that were not intimidating and tools that didn't take the bulk of the article to show them how to use. So just as developers wish that they could draw like me, I want you to know that artists often wish that they could code like you. Neither of you have five to seven years to spend learning the other's craft and perfecting your skills. There are stories to be told today. And this is why collaboration is so important. Together, we can build really amazing things. It's not a matter of learning to draw like me or for me to learn to code like you. It's a matter of seeking out and collaborating with those people who have skills that you wish you had, who have masteries you wish you had. So when you look at the things that I make, you're not just seeing my stories or my art. You're seeing the culmination of many creators. You're seeing the jQuery core team. You're seeing people who work in-house on different little projects that they put on GitHub, and they thought nobody was going to use this one little function that they made, but I used it. Uh, the spec editors and the implementers who put these APIs and these features into the browsers. Thank you guys so much. Uh, the people who respond to me on Twitter if I get stuck on something. I appreciate that. You're looking at the work by Ub Illworks to create the multi-pane camera that gave us parallax. You're seeing Lewis Carroll's story. None of this stuff is mine. I didn't stay up all night making this stuff. I'm standing on someone else's shoulders. I can tell stories because you help me tell stories. You are all creators, too, by proxy. Let's tell stories together forever. Thank you very much. <laughs>